Sports Talk Chicago, Herbert Johns, great to have all of you back here with us. Last segment here of the program, so great to have George on. Uh, so remember, for George Offen, hit him up, uh, Lombard, Friday evening. You can also buy the book, Tell Me a Story I Don't Know, um, anytime you would like. So uh, it's a great book. We'll put the link in the description of each video, and we're certainly grateful uh, that he joined us here on today's program. If you missed any of our interview, if you missed any of our discussion on the Bears, Cubs, White Sox, make sure you check that out here um, on the podcast, sportstalkchicago.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all over the place in terms of your podcast providers. Uh, it was a really fun interview, really enjoyed the time, and uh, looking forward to catching up with George again very soon as well. So, Last segment here of the program, there has been so much Bears news to discuss since the last time we did our live stream and the last show that, that we put out on all of our great radio affiliates and TV affiliates that we have to get to. So I think I don't want to bury the lead here. Justin Fields is going to be back. Justin Fields is returning to action this Sunday. Going to be back playing against the Detroit Lions, as George mentioned, as I read here today. He may not be 100%. That's what he said. And Matt Eberplus said during a press conference today that these last seven games are going to be key for Justin Fields to determine his future here in Chicago. So after all the tumults, all of the issues, all of the highs and lows of Justin Fields' career, it's going to come down to seven last games to see whether or not the Bears should keep him or lose him. I wish Justin Fields nothing but the best in these next seven games. And, you know, it's going to be key to see how he plays, especially against these contending teams. I don't really care if he lights it up against Arizona. I don't care if he lights it up against Green Bay, necessarily. I am more concerned and worried about how does he do against legitimate NFL football teams. And here's why I bring that up. And I want to take you back to a dark time, quote-unquote, in Bears history, 2020. If you all recall, the Bears were not looking good. Nick Foles came in to replace Mitch Trubisky. Then Foles got benched. They rode with Trubisky the rest of the way. Mitch did great. Led the Bears to a 500 record. Led them to a playoff appearance. Ended up losing. Here's the point. Mitch Trubisky in those last, what, six, seven games faced a lot of bad teams. And the Bears at the end of the season said, we don't care that you helped replace and help our season we don't care that you got us to the playoffs after being benched and us screwing you you're gone that's what they said you're gone we're done and the Bears ended up starting the new process of getting a new quarterback and a couple of months later drafted Justin Fields Nick Bolson was gone too point being the Bears did not buy Justin Fields or Mitch Trubisky's success against bad teams so when Justin Fields balls out against Atlanta, uh, Green Bay, Arizona. What are the Bears going to do this time? And how will they respond to this situation? I hope they stay with the course and stay with their policy. Because I'll tell you what, if Justin Fields struggles this weekend against Detroit, if he struggles against other teams like the Packers, like potentially even the Falcons or the Cardinals maybe, I doubt that's going to happen, but let's say that does We need to have a serious conversation about his future in Chicago. And there shouldn't be a debate. There shouldn't be a, well, maybe. No. If he cannot perform in these next seven games, he's gone, period. Tyson Bajan went up against the NFL's top 10 defense in the Saints, and he had four turnovers. But you know what? They were in the game, and at the end of the day, everybody criticized him as they should have for his mistakes. Would Justin Fields have done better? Probably not. And that's the key. Tyson Bajan faced, believe it or not, tough competition. The Panthers were an exception. But he faced decent teams, and he went 2-2. Two and two. And now Fields is going to be back for the rest of the seven games. Now, there's a lot riding on this, and I've already said it. And even if this season ends and Fields stays and the Bears retain him, I'll say it again. He was indicted by Tyson Bajan's success. That doesn't mean Tyson Bajan is better. That doesn't mean Tyson Bajan is lo- is the long-term answer. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is this. He was indicted, meaning Tyson Bajan showed that he's a competent, capable NFL quarterback in this system. He's had more success in this system in four games than Justin Fields has had his entire career. 
something needs to be said about that. And while everybody else doesn't want to talk about it or calls people like me crazy for even bringing up just straight facts and numbers, the situation exists and it deserves to be said for Bajan's sake. And this isn't a Team Bajan or Team Fields argument even. It's just the facts. The fact is, as even George said during our interview, Tyson Bajan is a competent NFL quarterback who should be a backup in this league for a long, long time. Because as a backup, he went 2-2. Two and two. Like it or not, he was 500, led the Bears to probably two out of their five total wins this season. <laughs> what about Justin Fields? How will we look at his season after what we saw from Bajan? So there's a lot riding on this. And the fact that they're already setting up the narrative by saying, well, he's still not 100%, but we're going to play him. I don't want to hear at the end of the year, well, he was never 100%. We kind of pushed him in. He did bad, but we're going to keep him because he wasn't 100%. We have seen enough to make a judgment on Justin Fields. And right now, if the season ended today, he'd be gone. And that's nothing personal. I don't hate him. It's the fact that he's 6-25 and as a starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. He's probably, I would guess, one of the worst quarterbacks in Bears history based on record. Based on record. One of the worst quarterbacks in Bears history, along with the head coach, who's definitely out of here, come to the end of this season, too. We have to keep all this in mind. Could Fields succeed elsewhere? Maybe. And maybe he'll get that opportunity. Maybe somebody will pick him up on like a one-year, $8 million deal, similar to what the Steelers did with Mitch, and he'll work something out elsewhere, and I wish him all the best. But it's not working here. And I would much rather the Bears either draft a quarterback, and let's say there's nobody out there, even sign a veteran to a one- or two-year deal. Look at what Josh Dobbs is doing in Minnesota. I mean, seriously. Josh Dobbs was cut by the Cardinals. Minnesota picks him up. Kirk Cousins got hurt. And now all of a sudden they're winning. And their playoff hopes, which were supposed to be dashed, are alive with Josh Dobbs. Why can't the Bears sign a veteran QB to a one- or two-year deal and, and have it work? The Vikings are actually masters of it. Case Keenum, Kirk Cousins, Josh Dobbs. They bring in a veteran, they pay him okay money, and they perform. I'd be okay with that. I would have no protest if the Bears said next year, we don't see any quarterbacks who are good. We're going to draft a wideout and an offensive lineman and bring in a two-year veteran QB even. But I'll tell you this, we've seen enough out of Justin Fields to make a determination. Even last year for Fields, just saying, so you all understand, he only threw for like 2,300 passing yards. I know he rushed for 1,100, but even in one of his quote-unquote best years, his defining season, 2,300 passing yards is not going to make it happen. Moreover, Justin's ability, or I should say inability, to avoid pressure, to avoid running into his offensive line, to avoid running into easy sacks, is hurting his opportunities. Bajan got sacked less than five times in four games. Fields is getting sacked at one of the highest rates in football again. Why is that happening? And last year, I'll admit it, I defended Fields because the offensive line was bad. I know they were ranked 15th by PFF, but PFF doesn't always get things right. I know they were ranked high. I know that they were supposed to be good, but I'll tell you what, Fields wasn't all to blame for what happened last year, but this year, different story. How is it possible for some backup D2 quote-unquote scrub to get sacked less than five times in four games. But the starter, the big-time QB, whom the Bears traded up for, came from the Ohio State University, is getting sacked at another NFL high rate. Somebody tell me how that's possible. Somebody tell me how any of that makes sense. You can't. You can't. So, I implore all of you, as the last seven games come in. So we're going to have them all live here on Sports Talk Chicago. Ask all of you to scrutinize everything you see. Sincerely. Scrutinize everything. The good, the bad, the ugly. Small things, big things. Because I'll tell you what, at the end of this year, all of that's going to have to come forward when the Bears and us decide 
what to do with Justin Fields. Right now, the verdict is guilty. Goodbye. (laughs) His punishment or his sentence is, you're off this team moving forward. He has not shown enough. He has not proven enough. He has not done enough to say, yes, I am the franchise QB. Yes, I deserve a $100 million contract. Yes, I should be here for 10 years. No way. And anybody who tells you that is being a fanboy, not objective. Because objectivity matters here. Objectivity matters, okay? We got people all over the Chicago media landscape who are fanboys for Justin Fields. And I'm okay with being a fan of certain players, but guess what? Objectivity should never decrease or go under being a fanboy. Objectivity should rule and reign all the time. And if it doesn't, then you can't call yourself an analyst. you got to call yourself a fanalist. The facts are the facts. Tyson Bajan went two and two. He barely got sacked. This team played okay under him. Justin Fields comes back. Sack rate goes way up. Turnovers stay the same. Still no growth or improvement in year three. This team continues to lose. Something has to be done. If your backup from a D2 school who went undrafted is playing toe-to-toe with you and you're a first-round pick in your third year, something's off, i.e., you need a new quarterback if you're the Bears. They do need a new QB. We said this from game one, and I had so much hype and and, uh, admonition, so so, so many good things I had going for Justin Fields during this offseason. We heard great reports. We saw great practices. We saw promising preseason games. I was ready to give him an opportunity to improve. Because last year he proved he was competent, somewhat. And this year it's been a full step back. People could argue and say that his passer rating's high, whatever it might be. The fact is they continue to lose with him. His numbers are down. Objectively, they are. And the backup QB did better than him in four games. Four games. Not to mention the fact that this year alone, there have been two pick sixes in the fourth quarter from Fields. We're talking about game-winning opportunities, game-winning drives, two pick sixes in the fourth quarter. When's the last time, if ever, that Justin Fields led a game-winning drive? I would even make an exception if he was a winner in the fourth quarter. I would say, you know what, maybe they should keep him because at least he's clutch and they win under him. They don't even win under him. And in the fourth quarter, when the crunch time's super high, we see... Interception turned into a touchdown. We see seven points given to the other team, and the Bears need seven points at times. You're not going to convince me that that means Justin Fields gets to stay. No, we got an issue here, and it's not going to be perfect. And Justin Fields is going to have to go, whether people like it or not. People don't want to hear it. Fanboys dominate the industry and are going to continue to shove the Justin Fields narrative down your throat. But the fact is, when we look at numbers, when we look at performance, when we look at this team, which is in shambles, I get it. He has not been part of the solution. He's just added to the problem. And maybe a fresh start for him is going to help everything. But realistically speaking, this is just not going to work. And for everybody... Who doesn't see it yet? These next seven games are really going to show it. One more thing, too. I wonder if Justin Fields deserves $200 million in a seven-year extension. What do you guys think? That's right. No answer, no response, because it's pretty obvious that I I wouldn't pay Justin Fields $10 million for a one-year deal. Doesn't deserve it. Does not deserve it. Got a little bit of time left, and I want to get into a Bears-Lions game preview before we finish up here today on the program. Bears and Lions are going to be facing off this weekend on Sunday. I want to make sure that everybody knows that we're going to be live for it on Sports Talk Chicago's YouTube page. So we're going to broadcast the game and give our commentary and thoughts. This is going to be a true test. I'll tell you what, if Justin Fields wins, I might have to shut my mouth, right? If Justin Fields pulls this one out, and the Bears somehow rally around him and beat the Lions, who are a quality football team, talk about a surprise. Talk about a shock. And I could see it going that way if Fields plays his absolute best, but the Lions are 7-2. and two. Jared Goff is on fire again at quarterback. 
How about a great season? And based on how quarterbacks have done against the Bears this year, I expect another big performance out of him. David Montgomery, back off IR, back in the in the uh, in, in the foray. 106 attempts, 501 yards, 4.7 yards per carry, and Jameer Gibbs also splitting carries. They're on pace, both of them, to have a 1,000-yard seasons right now, even after Montgomery's injury. And, of course, downfield, watch out for Amon Ross St. Brown and Josh Reynolds and Sam Laporta, the tight end. David Montgomery, by the way, leads the Lions in rush broken tackles in 2023 with 12. wonder why the Bears got rid of him. David Montgomery is going to have a big game because the Bears at times have problems controlling the run. Jared Goff is going to have a huge game because the Bears cannot control the pass if their life depended on it. This is going to be a crapshoot for the Bears. I am not expecting a win. I'm expecting a double-digit loss. I think it's going to be 30-17 to 17 Bears lose. 30-17 to 17 Bears lose on Sunday. I'm not expecting much out of him. Not expecting much out of this team. If they win and they pull it out, like I said, I am going to be stunned, and I will give them the benefit of the doubt, and I will give them uh, praise. Hopefully it's Justin Fields' uh, fault in a good way that they win. He's the reason why, but I'll tell you what, I'm not buying it. The Lions are hungry and ready to win. They're 7-2. and two. This is their first opportunity to really be a Super Bowl contender, I'll say it. They're 7-2. and two. They are great. they got to get past the Eagles somehow in the NFL or in the NFC, but other than that, they're going to be fine. They're a really good team. They have good players, quality players, especially on offense, QB, running back, wide receiver, all that stuff's covered for them. They have two running backs who are amazing, one of which was a former Bear whom the Lions picked up for two years at $10 million. So I am banking on the opportunity for the Bears to lose this one, for the Lions to win, and for things to move forward. We're going to have to see how this all plays out, of course, but I'm not buying this one. Montgomery is on a revenge tour. Montgomery is going to be making something happen. And even though he's been hurt when he's been in, he's been a monster for the Lions, as he should be, and as he's always been, as he's always been. And the Bears let him go. Ryan Pohl said, no, you know what? You're out of here. Now, Deontay Foreman's been good. Roshan Johnson's had his ups and downs, and Khalil Herbert's been oddly hurt most of the season. You're going to tell me it, Wasn't worth keeping Montgomery for $5 million per year, not even fully guaranteed. Come on. This team just continues to frustrate, continues to make me shake my head, continues to make me wonder why. Got to find the whys, right? That's a Matt Nagy quote. But I'll tell you what, this team has no whys left to give. They have no answers to any questions. And they're going to lose this game 30-17, to 17, and I'm being generous in them scoring 17 points because the Lions' defense, believe it or not, is good too. It's better. It's better. Last year, they were last. This year, they're 21st. Okay, that's going to be a, that's a big difference for them. Big difference. And that's why they are 7-2 because their defense improved a little bit. They're not elite, but they're better, but their offense is still elite. You have an elite offense, an okay defense. Now they're 7-2 and two instead of 8-9 and nine, or 9-8 and eight at the end of last year. This is not going to be a win at all for the for the, for the Bears. I was going to come in and, and take this one over and completely kill it. And the Bears are going to be left wondering what happened again. And it's not going to be a good look if they lose, especially, and part of it's Justin Fields' fault, especially after his injury coming back. But don't worry, they're going to blame the thumb injury on it. right? They're going to blame the thumb injury and say, oh, there's a problem here. That's why things didn't go well. Or, oh, the O-line did bad. The O-line did it to Justin Fields. That's why they lost, even though Fields ran into 20 sacks himself. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Their backup quarterback got sacked less than five times in four games. Justin Fields is getting sacked at an all-time high rate. We're going to have the whole game for you on Sports Talk Chicago, so make sure you tune into that. 
I appreciate everybody for tuning in here to today's program. Thank you to all of our great affiliates, WKAN 105.5 The Ticket, ACTV, Cities 92.9, Jet TV, and WJOB. Thank you to John Meadows, directing and producing. Thank you to our guest, George Hoffman. Hey, buy his book. Buy his book. Tell me a story I don't know. Find it all over the place. And make sure you follow him as well, George Hoffman, on Twitter. You'll see it all. We're going to be back with you next week. We're going to make sure to have a show next week, despite the holidays, so don't miss that as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on social media, Sports Talk Chicago. Hit the like button. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We're going to see you again very soon. So long, everyone.